Thanks for watching. Go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified of each new video as it comes out. Hey everybody, I'm JJ Johnson. You're watching Reality Survival and today I'd just like to talk to you about whether or not satellite phones would work in a grid down situation. So for whatever reason, let's say it's an EMP. Everybody loves to talk about the EMPs or perhaps a a coronal mass ejection or a cyber attack on the grid or whatever and in the United States all power production has ceased will satellite phones still work well the short answer is no um, but let me try to explain a little bit better why that is there's there seems to be we got I got into a discussion with the guy on on uh, our Facebook group the other day. It's called Prepper Skills. If you guys are interested in joining it, please do. Um, we we always you know like to have discussions on there and stuff like that. If you do Facebook, um, and uh, the question was asked, you know, will satellite phones still work after the grid goes down? I said. No, they won't. And and I, uh, another guy was talking, and he's like, "Yeah, they will." They, uh, basically, the, he's trying to explain that the sat phone makes a connection to the satellite, and that satellite routes the call to the other satellite straight to the other phone. And unfortunately, that's just not correct. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know why people think that, but the satellite communication system, Iridium, and um, Oh, what's the other one's uh, name? They're they're commercial. They're commercial uh, in Marsat, I think. They are commercial um, companies, and so there's a lot of things that have to happen for a, a call to go through. And I'll try to throw up a graphic here that kind of explains some of how it works. Um, it doesn't actually cover all of it, but it does give a, a, a fairly good representation of of what happens when you first make the call. The, the satellite phone does read where the satellites are and what satellites it can get reception from. That's a true statement. Um, but what ends up happening is as soon as your, your uh, terminal or your, your hand unit makes contact with the satellite, it's going to have to authenticate that that unit is an active unit with an active account that is turned on and can be paid. It does that, that authentication with a ground relay terminal uh, that is on the ground and through various different places throughout uh, the world. And um, so <laughs> if the power is out and the grid is down everywhere else, the ground relay terminal will not be able to respond and authenticate to the sat phone, uh, to the satellite to tell it that the sat phone is cleared to make communications. Um, th th there's also a lot of other communication that happens with the satellites as far as positioning goes, as far as uh, knowing where the other satellites are and, and all the, and, and the, in relation to where the, the ground is so that they can communicate with the different you know, units and stuff. There's a whole lot of math and everything that goes into that and it's way, way beyond my head. Um, but the bottom line is is that authentication has to happen and it not only happens between the uh, the first phone let's say we'll go two different examples here on the first example let's say your sat phone you, you're going to get authenticated and that's an active unit okay so it says all right we're going to go ahead and route the call through these other satellites and then uh, let's say that you're going to be calling a landline trying to get a hold of somebody Okay, well, the grid's down, that's not going to work either because uh, when that satellite phone goes down to the ground relay terminal and then, and then it has to shoot that message from the relay terminal to the switching station for the, for the switch for the landline. Okay, well, all that power's down, so that's not going to work. So that's option one. It's no good. So what about going to another handset, another sat phone handset? Well, once uh, the, the other handset has to be on, to receive that call and that also has to be authenticated to the account because they charge on both ends of that. It's not just when on the receiving end or the calling end. Um, sat phone minutes are pretty expensive and so they're tracking on that on both ends so that has to be re-authenticated too. So that one's not going to go through on that end either. So it wouldn't even be connected 
But for some reason, let's say if you were in a part of the world where there was still power or something or whatever, and then this other part was the other end of the call was in a part of the world where the power was out, then it wouldn't be able to be authenticated, so it wouldn't complete. So um, essentially, the bottom line is is that unfortunately, as useful as satellite phones are, and and they are a good unit. I use them regularly. I carry them in my truck. Um, we operate out here in um, uh, Nebraska and uh, Colorado and Wyoming where there's a sparse satellite signal and so we have um, iridium cell phones you know to be able to make calls if we need to and uh, they're useful. They're a useful tool but in a grid down situation they're going to be a paperweight unfortunately. So uh, that is that. My recommendation would be to uh, look at other communication options that don't rely on any kind of a network. So um, I'll be showing you here pretty soon uh, some of the stuff that I've got. Um, I wouldn't say that this, the stuff that I have is the best out there. It's not even really close. It's just a budget-minded you know, sets of radios and different frequencies and things like that and um, that covers kind of a wide variety that's that's kind of my goal but using a radio that you can just charge and then use the airways is um, probably a little bit better option in a grid down situation now if we are experiencing a coronal mass ejection or possibly even an EMP there could be some ionospheric um, uh, interference with radio communications for a while but that's going to normalize uh, fairly quickly and uh, in the long term radios will probably be the best option so anyway guys I hope you found this useful as always I definitely appreciate it when you click the thumbs up button when you share it with your friends on Facebook and Twitter and don't forget to live the six P's proper prior preparation prevents poor performance stay safe guys